hello beautiful people and welcome back to the black wallet so a few weeks ago i made a post on the black wallet on how village banking can work effectively what is village banking some of the challenges in village banking basically trying to um, make people understand what village banking is surprisingly a lot of people complained of their experience with village banking they called it a demon i can only imagine village banking being a demon and that's because of the experiences they have had with village banking so in today's video i thought it would be very knowledgeable informative to do a video on village banking basically for us to understand what village banking is the models in village banking some challenges and how to make village banking effectively so that is what we are going to do in today's video let's get into it the first thing you want to understand in any investment is how or what that particular investment is village banking also known as a savings group or crowdfunding is simply a small savings and lending scheme set or organized outside the financial the formal financial sector like the name implies village banking it's simply organized by a group of people who are familiar with each other there are basically two models of village banking. By models, I simply mean the principles on how that village banking will work. Number one, which is founded by Mohammed Yunis, founder of Greenman Banking Model. This is a type of village banking where individuals, like I said before, who are familiar with each other, come up with um, a group where they set up some terms and conditions and they save and lend money within the cycle so that is the first model of village banking so this particular village banking works in a way like i mentioned before people pull out money together and they lend out that money take an example i save 1000 kwacha that 1000 kwacha after saving we have our monthly meetings and I am allowed to borrow 2,000 kwacha. Depending on the terms and condition of our village banking, I can borrow up to two times or some village banking three times the amount I have saved for an agreed duration. Like I said, it's really dependent on the terms and conditions we agree on as a group. So different village banking groups have different terms and conditions. So I save a 1,000 kwacha, I can borrow a 2,000 kwacha, for example, for let's say a month, and I'm supposed to pay a 5% or 10% interest after one month with the principal. Other village bankings, like one of them I was in, we used to do it three months. So if I save a 1,000 kwacha, I'm allowed to borrow a 2,000 kwacha for a duration of three months. In that three months, I'm expected to pay back the principal and monthly pay an interest fee, which could be 5% of the 2,000 kwacha. If I'm borrowing that money for three months, I'm to pay a 5% every single month until the third month where I'm expected to pay back the principal and the interest. That is model number one and how it works. Model number two is where a group of us still familiar with each other come together and apply for a formal loan. A formal loan could be a bank through a recognized institution with the intention of sharing that amount of money. That will mean we also share the cost or the interest that has to be paid according to the loan we are applying for. Alternatively, we could also borrow a certain amount of money to start up our own business. So that will be like our capital as a group. And we are expected to pay an interest amount together as a group. So that type or the model of village banking was inspired from John Hart, who founded Finca in 1984. Those are basically the two types of village banking. Having been in a village banking myself, there are some of the things that were quite beneficial that I would love to share. 
One of them is that village banking encourages the saving culture. What do I mean by that? Imagine you know that the next village banking um, is next month. Obviously, you're putting aside a certain amount of money to offset your loan and also to uh, ensure that you save some money. Because of that, it motivates you and also helps you build up a habit of saving with the intention of taking that money to the village banking. So yes, it does motivate a saving culture. The second thing is in a village banking, the culture of supporting each other's businesses is there. From the village banking I was involved in years ago, what used to happen is if there's someone who sells rice within the village banking, we support their business. Likewise, you're getting to know different types of people in the village banking um, and what type of businesses they do. As a result, you're able to support one another. The third thing is that village banking loan rates are quite low compared to formal financial institutions. Imagine you're borrowing a 2000 quarter for three months at an interest rate of let's say 10% or 5%. That is something that's quite affordable. And even the process of how you, you would obtain that loan is flexible. And like you going to the bank, it's quite tedious and really you, you're not even guaranteed to get that loan. So with the village banking, it's of an advantage because you can apply for a loan and the process is flexible. The process also is something that you can manage to do, which is at a lower rate. And the other, the other advantage is the profits on the payout. The money that you are saving, you're borrowing as a group, the interest rate is accumulated and accounted for as a whole, then shared amongst every individual in the group equally. Uh, if the profit um, rate was, let's say, 20% for the whole year, or 30% of what everyone invested in as a group, then what they are just going to use is ratios. If you save the 1,000 kwacha, your profit will be 20%. If someone saved the 50,000, their profit will be T plus the 20%. That will be their profit. So basically, that's also a way of you utilizing the group money for personal capital, but also at the same time, multiplying what you already have or would have invested. Um, village banking is beneficial in the sense that it. It can advance your net worth. Look at it this way. You have a 3,000 kwacha. You borrow from the village banking. You go and invest it in another business. By the time you are, the, the meeting is coming in, let's say, three months, you are able to offset your loan, your principal, and have money for yourself. So it does build up your net worth if you understand what is happening in the village banking. It's also a great place to get capital. Like I mentioned before, where um, you don't have the collateral, you don't have the paperwork to get a loan from the bank, village banking becomes an alternative for you to have a capital startup for um, whatever you want to use the money for. So at least after watching this video, you know what village banking is. You know the two models of village banking. That is the principles of how a village banking can work. And at least by now, you know the advantages of village banking. So stay tuned in the next video where you would learn how village banking can be challenging and what are some of the ways to make it effective. Until that video, see you.